With the extensive use of small screen devices such as iPhones and iPads, it's important to be able to keep screen clutter to a minimum and only show the user the objects they need to see at any given time. One of the ways that this is achieved in many apps is by using popovers, resembling cartoon speech bubbles that display information only while the user needs to see it and are then dismissed. FileMaker 13 includes a popover object that works in this way and it provides some very flexible options for all sorts of interface tricks. Let's take a quick look. The basis of popovers in FileMaker 13 is a special type of button object that users can click on to expose the popover panel. So to add a popover to a layout, you first need to choose the popover button type using the button tool on Layout Mode's toolbar. So if I click and hold on the button tool, I can choose the popover button type. Then, when I drag across an area of the layout, a popover button is created. And as soon as I release the mouse button, the popover itself appears, and so does the popover setup pane. The popover setup pane allows me to name the popover, and whatever I enter as the title here will appear across the top of the popover itself. I'll type Enter More Information as the title for this particular popover. I'll also choose for the popover to appear below the popover button. Notice that there are options for the popover to appear left, right, above, or below. My popover is now popping below the original popover button, and we have another option at the bottom of the popover setup pane to apply script triggers to the popover itself. After dismissing the popover setup, I can then use the popover itself as some additional layout area. I can select it, size it appropriately. I can enter text in the popover button by selecting the text tool and clicking, and typing some text, and I can place objects into the popover panel. So I'm going to bring the field that I called a further field down and place it within the popover panel like so. Now if I return to browse mode, let's have a look at the way the popover panel works. Notice that the popover button in this case is within the first panel of the slide control. And when I click on it, the popover appears giving me access to the field that the popover contains. Back in layout mode, if I double click on the popover button, the popover appears as a layout space within which I can add further design elements. So for example, I can add a text object. And again, back in browse mode, the layout changes that I've made in the popover appear. When I click outside the popover, the popover is dismissed. You can, of course, arrange many popovers in different positions on a layout to provide an enormous amount of additional layout space that will appear only when the user takes an action to invoke each popover. You can only display one popover at a time, of course. So invoking one popover automatically dismisses any other popover that was previously displaying.